Thank you, Chairman Cardin. Thank you to all of our witnesses. Um, Mr. Wilcox, I want to say right away that um, your senator, <laughs> Cynthia Lummis, grabbed me on my way out of lunch. I'm the first person to leave what is clearly the most entertaining lunch in DC this week. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> if, if you're easily entertained. Um, anyway, she grabbed me, she said, she said, would you please apologize <laughs> to Jim for me I, I, and, and tell him I'm so sorry, but um, if you'll carry that ball, she said, she'll give me notes on the lunch. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to express that right away. But thank you all for, for being here. And thank you, uh, Chairman Cardin, uh, for, first of all, for this timely and important um, hearing and for your leadership. It really was, um, for, for, those of, for those of you who think that we never do anything together, it's because no one really reports on the things we do together. But this was a joy. It really was to work on this bill. It, it turned out to be a good bill, not just one I, I um, sort of grudgingly supported, but one that I'm happy to champion. And uh, I'm, I'm especially pleased with the, the cooperation between the two parties and the, the four people that lead all whose names begin with C. Strictly coincidental. Anyway, but today's hearing is to talk about the, the role of local government and, and local leadership in implementation and to get your feedback because even the best strategies and the best plans in the world that have to be assessed, uh, I think one year later is a good time to do that. So thank you for that opportunity. You know, during the, the bills and the uh, negotiations, I, I really did put a strong emphasis on making sure that rural and local communities and their role in the funding formula, it was maintained, the 90-10 split that you're all familiar with. And, um, and, and really, I don't think with much pushback. I don't want to imply that it was a hard, difficult thing to conclude, but, but it was important. And it recognizes the role of rural communities as much as anything, the, the role of, of a, a system that recognizes the East Coast and the West Coast, the, the Canadian border and the Mexican border can only work if it's all hard, hard, hard covered, right? And, um, and we can't reserve a few hundred miles here and there for dirt. Um, so, so thank you for that. And, um, and it, was, it was a joy. It really does ensure that our states and localities have consistent funding. Very important, as you know, particularly as we face these these high prices we have today with inflation, that consistency uh, and, and the, the counting on uh, consistent uh, funding is, is so important. Um, the other thing that, that we worked hard on and I was very pleased by was, was the uh, codification of the one federal decision policy. Um, hard fought, right now I think people on all sides of the, of the maybe all ends of the spectrum of the philosophical spectrum can see the value of that, whether you're citing, you know, whatever it is you're trying to permit, um, you may be for that or you may be against it, but the next day you're for this and against that. Having a consistent regulatory regime that recognizes that streamlining doesn't mean compromising the integrity of, of, the, of the process, I think uh, was a, it was a successful conclusion, and I want to talk a little bit about that, and I'll be very interested in some of your experiences with the one federal decision and, and where we are in that. Um, obviously, and, and, I, and I have a North Dakota in here that I'll get to introduce here in a little bit, but um, there were a lot of wins in it for my little state of North Dakota. We are literally, literally, there's, a, there's even a monument to prove it, the center of the North American continent in North Dakota. We're a long ways from everybody that wants the things that we produce, um, whether it's food or, or energy, and getting it to market is important. And so um, it, this one includes a lot of wins for North Dakota. But it, but it's really more about the country than just one state. Um, now, the, you know, the, the codification of the one federal decision was a priority item, as I said, for, for other com committee members as well as myself. But it was a significant policy win and something that I've loudly applauded. And frankly, I think it should be duplicated in other areas of permitting reforms. But it's also one of the things that I'm most concerned about. So that's why I'm going to be interested in what you all have to say about its, its enforcement. Um, implementation is far from complete. In fact, a year after being signed into law, especially, um, the, the administration still has no specific plan as to how they intend to meet the law's goal of, of this two-year average of project reviews. It's, that's really unacceptable, especially, like I said, Time, the clock is ticking, the calendar is moving, inflation is real, 
we need to have some certainty. Permitting, certainty, and improved efficiency for infrastructure projects only comes if the agency, the United States Department of Transportation, makes it a priority. And as our last, uh, our last hearing on this confirmed, state and local communities want and need predictable and expeditious permitting. Similarly, the bill included language to expedite NEPA reviews for oil and gas gathering lines <clears throat> if it led to the reduction of released methane. Win-win. See, I, I'm, I'm a person, as, is, as I think uh, Senator Cardin is, who believes that not every transaction in this town requires a loser. There can be winners on both sides of transactions, and I think this is one of those situations. If you can demonstrate a reduction in methane, then we ought to have a faster NEPA process. Um, at a hearing in the Energy and Natural Resource Committee, uh, Sec Secretary Holland only acknowledge the ex expedited authority by saying, quote, we'll move that forward as we can. See, as we can isn't a word that's consistent with expediting. <laughs> um, responses like these ins don't exactly inspire confidence, not in, in our local communities, in our states, nor in the industries that build roads. Um, I know that Secretary Buttigieg just said he's, quote, working on it as well. But to anyone paying attention, it's pretty clear it's not a high priority. Anyway, um, th the main goal here is to hear from you all. I want to get to that, and, and uh, we'll ask some questions. Uh, I hope we have some more participation by the committee members, but I wouldn't count on a lot of Republicans getting here anytime soon. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you all.